I didn't intend to come in here and do a video, even photos, but I seen the workmanship that Jim's doing, and although he's a little bit on the slower side, it's getting done right, and that's what I wanted to show you. So, pretty excited. I mean, just look at the, uh, you can kind of see kind of a, I guess you'd call it an easement or uh, another word. I'm just try, trying to think. So nothing is fully welded up. I mean, most of this is just tacked in there. Um, as far as the motor mounts go, so we'll finish those up and then we'll get on to the next. But we have the cross member here. So for those of you guys who don't know um, or kind of follow us, we normally do parts. Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, phone number for parts, 303-666-9020. With the occasion of service, well, we do quite a bit of service work, but we're, uh, this is fairly really a big project. We've got a couple big projects going on. This has been one of the bigger ones. Um, went into it with the thought of we could get this done quickly and it's just it's completely custom nothing nothing really out there I mean there's people who have done similar things but not in exactly the way so let's give you a little background we're dealing with a 71 70 71 CJ5 Buick 225 completely rebuilt um, from literally the ground up crank short block cylinder heads uh, you name it obviously that's not completely done in the sense that it's not fully dressed but here shortly will be shortly meaning a few weeks probably um, these have a very very short front end on them and it makes doing a lot of the upgrades people want on them kind of tricky and those usually are power steering power brakes um, Kind of list goes on and on. This one is getting power steering, power brakes, uh, disc brakes uh, in the front. Um, and actually the whole axle will be swapped on this front to this guy here. Um, essentially the same axle except it'll have an open knuckle um, out here and then we will convert this guy over to disc. We have the pieces to do that. Uh, it's got a automatic which was one of the most difficult things to figure out how to do to keep the drive shafts all um, correct. We ended up running into, even after we finally figured out the right placement, we ended up running into an issue where the drive shaft would come in contact with the pan. So that was fun. Go online, there's not a lot of information. A lot of times you can find hundreds, if not thousands of forms and people done this and they've done that. There's probably five, no joke. Not a lot of people, gone to the extent to put an automatic and most of that uh, reasoning is just because the drive shaft especially in the rear can get really really short uh, we were able to get around that advanced adapters made a kit for a turbo 350 that's about the only automatic you're going to be able to use um, in this setup because again you're going to get too long uh, we had an 18 we were trying to use the original 18 unfortunately that wasn't uh, going to work um, for a few reasons but um we found a, a 20 uh they had been recently gone through we just pulled um and that worked great except for the yoke was still too big so um that drive shaft is going to be a completely custom drive shaft we did get the yoke fixed over we'd swap the rear end to get it centered uh, of course because uh, the original ones of these were an offset 44 so now it's got a centered 44 and uh it still needs to be dressed i mean this thing is by no way uh done it still has obviously front axle um, the rear axle is mounted um, as you can see it's but it's not we mounted it uh and it's tight um and boy let me tell you i'm the one that put this in i spent i don't know normally do stuff on the lift but my garage down in the shop has been it, it just can't be plugged with a project like this the whole time so and we really didn't want things to get moved around, so we moved up to the upper garage, which is my personal garage. And actually, it's about to go back down because we're going to start welding on some stuff we got to do on the bottom. Um, and it's just been too difficult. Jim's been carrying my welder back and forth, and then he finally dumped it the other day. So I told him no more. Um, luckily, it didn't damage anything. But anyway, so 
Couple things with this guy that was a pain. One, these spring perches, we're gonna have to redo all these. I didn't even realize this in the beginning, but these are invert, like literally bent inwards, just from use over time. They're not real strong the way they do these to begin with, and it took me, that's what took me so long, because this should not have been a hard job to swap an axle, really should, I mean, I dropped the one out pretty easily. It, it came out with a lot of tension, so I knew there was gonna be an issue and it was these leaf springs and they're really just brought in uh, too close. So um, I had to get creative and a lot of, lot of strength. And I finally got um, them started. So that was that, um, that's gonna have to be redone. We'll have to cut these completely off and reperch them. Or I should say not really reperch, but reshackle. Um, if we can save these shackles or if they're worth saving, we'll save them. If not, we'll be replacing those and then the drive shaft angle is gonna be changed, so we'll pitch this. Those will get reperched to, to accommodate um, a better drive shaft angle so it's not so uh, binding, because they're, again, they're gonna be a fairly short drive shaft. When it's all said and done, you know, it's got an orange frame, that's kind of how it came in. Uh, we'll try to get that cleaned up. Well, we will clean that up and get it painted. Nothing, you know, it's gonna go out to a blaster. There's a few things on it uh, other, other than what we've messed with. They'll have to get, you know, obviously uh, finish welding, this stuff. Um, and then this this was all here. This is like a reinforcement piece. Uh, this plate you see on the outside. I don't know if they did the other side. Yeah, so pretty common because these are kind of known to crack. They also did it back here. Again, another area because it's right where the joint of the firewall comes in with the engine. Um, so that was all done before. It's not done the cleanest. We'll probably, you know, something like this might be a little hard to get in here and clean up without really having to take material out. So we'll see if Jim can get in here and do something with it if it needs to be done. If he thinks it's strong enough, just ugly, we'll probably just paint this. Um, because at this point, when it's like that, your option would really be a frame replacement. And clearly we don't want to do that since we've been working on this particular frame for quite a while. Um, plus, this project, as you probably can imagine, can get very uh, expensive. We're trying to keep it within reason, especially because we've pre-quoted this. So two things, you know, going forward, I know not to do next time. One is to um, quote a time frame uh, because every single thing that could possibly get stuck on this thing or get held up or have to be researched more or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, happened so time frame pff, it's just when it's done it's done and it's done right and then the second thing is is cost you know it's always hard to go into these because customers are going to want to know you know what's this going to run me well unfortunately on a project like this it's hard to say um, we can price the components out fairly easily and we did that but when it comes to work you know it's very very difficult to fine-tune that um, because if you run into things like we did uh, for example, the drive shaft, front drive shaft. I mean, literally, the directions from uh, advanced adapters was to cut out and massage, quote unquote, the the pan, the transmission pan that we just had built. It's like no way, no way are we going to do that. That's not what we want to do. Nobody's going to want a, a chunk out of their pan, you know. Um, so, and Jim was ab absolutely beside himself, saying no way. You know, so, you know, hopefully we don't have to do that at all. We've got around that from coming up with a custom drive shaft and a yoke we found. Um, also, one of the things that's nice about us is we have a junkyard here, a Jeep junkyard. So it's not like we're going to, if this was a case where we were doing this project remotely, like at a shop, I can see why shops charge, you know, blank check amounts until they're done because they're gonna be sending people out to a yard like ours or another one, or maybe not even a yard if they don't have anything around them, ordering stuff online, getting it wrong, sending it back. There's just no way to quote something like this. So, you know, on this particular project, we have it priced out um, and we should be pretty close to spot on on that. I mean, clearly we're way over that in a lot of areas, but you know, that's kind of, the, you know, I took this on and that was my choice as the owner. Um, and I learned from it just like anybody. So, and I, I don't really regret doing it for that reason. There's going to be some pretty neat things we get out of this. Um, Jim's fabricating some brackets. Um, so we'll have custom brackets 
And whether we produce those at a larger scale for sale, it depends. Uh, but that's for not only the, the brake booster setup um, and then the hanging pedals. This doesn't have hanging pedals originally. You'll have a custom floor in it for the tunnel cover. Um, and you know, there's here's the deal. I mean, you're seeing a lot of stuff sitting here. Um, there's a chance some of this stuff ain't gonna work. I mean, this this master this brake uh, booster master cylinder. I mean, it looks good. I mean, there's obviously some cleanup to do on that firewall, but uh, there's a chance that that rod is gonna be too long, too short, and the throw is gonna be different. Good news with Jim, he can make some pretty much anything. But there's still a chance that we're going to get this in there and go to use the function. And if it puts you through the windshield or doesn't put you through, you know, stop you at all, we got to go back to drawing board. So a lot of R&D um, has gone into this project and we'll continue going to it. I want to show you a couple more things and then I'm going to wrap it up. I got to work on some other things tonight. Um, if you know what a 7071 looks like, you're gonna immediately go, whoa, what did you do there? This was Jim, he got creative. And one of the things I love about him, even though he's a little slow, that cross member, okay? First off, it's not where it normally goes. The normal one goes up here. You can see where it's been cut out. We'll obviously clean that up. Um, and second, it's not even the right cross member. Um, my hope is, again, and this is tacked in, so if it had to be moved, it can still be. But this is just for mock-up right now. But the hope is, is that we're gonna have this tie rods off this, uh, that one there, axle once we get it in, and it's gonna turn, and it's gonna turn full throw, full through left, full through right. Um, this is something nobody's really done before. We took a uh, frame we had out here, we don't usually cut our frames. This is a frame we weren't going to use. It was a bad frame. Had a good front cross member. And um, he said, you know what? Let's take that off. It's going to mount the gearbox we want to use. And uh, will give us the strength we want at the, the, the front. So, again, whether this works out, I don't know. I mean, it looks like it will, but there's a lot of variables that are going, that are going to go into this pitman arm, the way it's set up. And again, with this, we don't want it to go down the road and death wobble or, you know, a few things that these things can do if these angles aren't properly set up. So lots and lots and lots to go, unfortunately. As much as I love to say, hey, we're getting there, we are, but it's not just around the corner either. So um, that's about it right now. We haven't touched the body really. We haven't moved the fuel tank, although that won't be too hard considering everything else we've done. Um, I think the next phases are are really um, getting that axle fixed and, uh, in the right proper angle, getting the drive shafts uh, fully done. These ones, this one on the front is just a temporary one that we kind of put together. We'll have one that's actually built for this. Um, making sure that with suspension, you know, up and down, that there's no contact with the pan and, and that uh, drive shaft because again that would be the issue that most people were reporting about these anyway um, You can see where we lowered the, This this engine sitting a little bit lower than it normally does um, Again, it's kind of what we where we went with actually they're forward a little bit too They're not gonna be a lot of room up here for radiator fan, but he had this thing fully nosed off meaning all the original parts were back on it back there and and he was able to fit a fan so It'll be interesting because obviously on the front end of this, we can't really go uh, too much longer as far as, you know, you know, I mean, worst case scenario, you could put potentially put longer fenders on like they did in the later years and you probably wouldn't really notice, but we're trying to keep this thing, you know, so when you walk up to it, you go, oh, it's a 7071, it, you know, still is that shorter nose and Everything is fairly stock looking. Obviously, when you look in under the hood and uh, underneath, you're gonna see, whoa, I, wait a minute, this isn't at all what, you know. But anyway, so really neat project, very, very involved. I wouldn't recommend it for somebody just tinkering in their garage, um, unless you have a buttload of time and space. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you're gonna do a Buick, these things are, 
getting extremely hard to get parts for. Uh, we have one more build going on on another rebuilt one. Um, and that will pretty much take care of all the loose parts we have, minus we might end up with a good set of heads. Um, we actually have a good low mileage, uh, uh, three, eight, odd, not an odd fire, that one's a even fire, 59,000 miles original. So uh, if you're looking for one of those. Oh, and then lastly, if you're wondering, well, how'd you clear the exhaust? Because that's a big issue on these. And you can see, had we used the factory exhaust manifold, um, or even a set of headers, we would be uh, we'd be in a pickle here. Um, look, look how skinny these are. Okay, these are very rare. They're very sought after, and they came off a 1979 Buick uh, that that motor I told you about actually. Um, even fire, they were bolt up to them. Um, Skyhawk uh, 3.8. So. That's about, and I was told about them, and we lucked out and found a whole car. We had to buy a whole car just to get those out of it. We did end up with a good motor, um, like I said, and that one should sell fairly easily, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of work on that, a lot of work to find this. Had we not found those, that would have been a big dilemma, and we more than likely would have had to find some headers that would have gone around um, this and a side pipe. Now, side pipe wouldn't have been a bad scenario in this particular case, because he's not, uh, this customer's not use, going to use this off-road or off-road very much. For somebody who is using off-road, you don't really want side pipes because it's an obstacle you're likely gonna hang up on. So uh, keep that in mind with that stuff as well. But yeah, I think that's it. So if, if any of you guys have done something like this and have some photos, videos, wanna share some comments, things you did differently, or you were thinking about it, feel free to reach out. Uh, Fridays are usually the best day to call on. It's the day we're closed, but it's the day I'm out here doing the cleanup. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And I haven't really showed a lot of the inside, and I'm not going to right now because it's everything's kind of just piled up in here. Um, but when we get it all done, uh, we will we will get some nice photos and stuff of that. So.